Nearly eight months of war in the Gaza Strip and there are no signs of truce in sight. Now the Americans are still backing the Israelis. They are denying any genocide, unlike many world leaders. But Washington still is skeptical that Israel would achieve total victory in this war. Now in the next report, we question the end goal of the Rafah operation. Take a look. We are doing this even as the civilian population is being evacuated and while fulfilling our obligation towards humanitarian needs. Our latest efforts are bearing fruit. As of now, in Rafah, almost half a million people have been evacuated from the areas of fighting. The humanitarian catastrophe that has been spoken of has not been realized, nor will it. Eliminating Hamas is an essential step in order to ensure that on the day after, there will be no element in Gaza that can threaten us. Ever since Hamas launched its October 7th assault on Israel, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly vowed to achieve a total victory against the militant group. However, the Biden administration believes that the goal to entirely defeat Hamas and achieve total victory in the Palestinian enclave is highly unlikely. Washington has put a question mark over Israel's future plans for Gaza. We've been very clear that um, when it comes to the future of Gaza, uh, we do not support and will not support an Israeli reoccupation. We also, of course, do not support uh, Hamas governance in Gaza. We know and have seen where that's led all too many times for the people of Gaza and, uh, and for Israel. Uh, and we also can't have anarchy uh, and a vacuum that's likely to be filled by chaos. That only underscores the imperative of having a clear, concrete plan for the day after the conflict in Gaza in terms of governance, in terms of security, in terms of rebuilding uh, Gaza for, uh, for its people. Israel's defense minister has himself challenged Netanyahu's post-war Gaza plan. Yoav Gallant said that he had presented a blueprint for Gaza's future, which has not evoked any response. Already in October, on the night of our military maneuver into Gaza, the defense establishment presented its war plan to the cabinet, stating that it will be necessary to destroy Hamas battalions, while simultaneously working to establish a local, non-hostile Palestinian governing alternative. Since October, I have been raising this issue consistently in the cabinet and have received no response. The rift in the Israeli cabinet over Gaza is out in the open. There seems to be a growing polarity within the United States' political circles as well. The Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill on Thursday that would force President Joe Biden to send weapons to Israel. This rebuke comes after the Biden administration halted a major weapon shipment to Israel over concerns of fearsome Rafah operation. The U.K. also seems to be in alignment with U.S.'s Republicans. Britain claims that so far no red line has been crossed by Israel in its war with Hamas. The, the assessment that we undertake for um, arms uh, export controls is one of the, the most rigorous in the world and we take into account a wide range of factors. Uh, the Foreign Secretary undertakes that analysis and uh, has set out the position that we are comfortable continuing with those, um, those exports. No single action uh, represents a, a, a red line. As the Foreign Secretary set out uh, a few days ago, we're confident with continuing. However, countries across the globe are not in alignment with the UK's take on the Gaza war. South Africa, Egypt and Turkey have joined hands against genocide in the Gazan Strip. South Africa has appealed to the World Court to put a full stop to the ongoing Israeli assault. The key point today is that Israel's declared aim of wiping Gaza from the map is about to be realized. 
Further, evidence of appalling crimes and atrocities is literally being destroyed and bulldozed. In effect, wiping the slate clean for those who've committed these crimes and making a mockery of justice. Egypt and Israel are trading blame over blocked Gaza aid. The rift has come to a point where Egypt wants to abandon its role as a mediator for ceasefire talks. We found Israel continuing to escape its responsibilities and evade efforts exerted to reach a ceasefire. But instead, it is moving forward in its military operation that is rejected in Rafah, as well as attempting to use Rafah crossing from its Palestinian side to tighten the siege on the enclave. On Monday, Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan reiterated his stance that Hamas was a resistance movement. He even said that Hamas members are currently being treated in hospitals across the country. I never see Hamas as a terrorist organization and, as of this moment, I follow Hamas step by step. And in my country right now, more than 1,000 Hamas members are in our hospitals, all of them undergoing treatment. As the war in Gaza rages on, Palestinians marked their Nakba anniversary on Wednesday. It has been 76 years since Israel declared its independence and 76 years since 700,000 Palestinians were displaced from their homes. In present-day Gaza, Palestinians claim that they are experiencing another catastrophe, or Nakba, which is much worse than the previous one. This Nakba of 2023-2024 is harder than the previous Nakbas. There was a Nakba in 1967 and another in 1948. The Palestinian people won't recover from this Nakba for the next 10 years.